presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand. presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Welcome to this time of reflection. Welcome if you're listening. Welcome if you're watching. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm one of the team who serve the church here in and around Kirby Lonsdale. The Sunday before Lent. Uh, pancakes will be flying on Tuesday and then Lent begins the following day, Ash Wednesday. Through the church year um, there are many festivals that we celebrate. We celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Easter. Lent is different. We don't celebrate Lent, we keep Lent. Uh, interesting difference there and each year Lent is offered to us as this time to prepare for Good Friday, for Easter Day, uh, and, and to prepare to make a journey thoughtfully and prayerfully with that destination in mind. And each year the Sunday before Lent has a particular reading, an incident that's in the Gospels, and we know it as the Transfiguration. And each year that is given to us, if you like, uh, to prepare for our Lent and journey. It points to the glorification of the cross and the empty tomb. And so each year we have that before we begin the journey, just to remind us that's where our destination is going to lead us. Journey there, thoughtfully, prayerfully, with that destination in mind. And so Nigel will read for us, and then Liz is going to share some thoughts. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah, with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one from Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved one. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, my name is Liz and I'm one of the team serving the churches in and around Kirby Lonsdale. Last week in our online service, Reverend Anne was talking about Jesus coming as the light of the world, as detailed in the prologue of St John's Gospel. This week in a reading from Mark's Gospel, we're taken to a time not long before Jesus' crucifixion when Jesus had been telling his disciples what would happen to him, 
how he would be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and how he would be killed and then rise again after three days. But the disciples were having none of it. Peter had even taken Jesus aside and told him that this must never happen, earning himself a stern rebuke from Jesus. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. After all Jesus had taught them, the disciples didn't understand or didn't want to, so something had to happen to, that, to change their mindset and quickly. Then we get the story we have just heard read to us about Jesus' transfiguration. Before we examine this familiar story, I want to talk about a subject close to my heart, science. I'm told that science teachers never tire of the reaction they get from their students the first time they look down a microscope at a drop of pond water or gaze through a telescope at the night sky. Suddenly they realise that they are looking at a different world previously unknown to them. The drop of water is teeming with life, insects and bacteria moving around, in and out of filamentous plants. The night sky is full of stars in different formations and brightnesses. Students often gasp in awe at what they have discovered. Now it seems that the transfiguration of Jesus was a similar turning point for the disciples, Peter, James and John. Let's look at the significant points of this happening and how it relates to incidents the disciples would have recognised from stories in their Bible, the Old Testament. First, Jesus took them up a high mountain. This would have given them an air of expectation, as Moses was commissioned by God as leader of the Israelites on Mount Horeb, and then received the Ten Commandments of the law from God on Mount Sinai. In the book of Daniel, the Ancient of Days, God, was described as having clothing as white as snow. And now Jesus' clothing was dazzling pure white, showing the presence of God. Then we have the appearance of Moses and Elijah. The disciples would have rubbed their eyes. These men were from a different historical era. Some... 1400 and 900 years previously. But these prophets were rumoured never to have died, but were taken away by God himself. Suddenly a cloud appears, just like the cloud that led the Israelites through the desert, another indication of God's presence. We can understand that the disciples were terrified and good old Peter starts to babble about erecting shelters, wanting to hold on to this momentous grand occasion. But he doesn't get the opportunity, because the incident is over in a flash. However, not before the voice of God in the cloud has commanded, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Peter, James and John may have not witnessed the baptism of Jesus or heard the voice at the time which said, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. But there are clearly parallels with these two incidents. At his baptism, God's comments are clearly directed at Jesus. In the Transfiguration, God's voice is clearly directed not at Jesus, but at the disciples. Why was this? As I said earlier, Jesus' time on earth was coming to an end. Jesus had spoken to the disciples on a number of occasions about his betrayal, persecution and crucifixion, but they would not or did not want to understand him. What they saw in Jesus 
was what they wanted to see. The warrior messiah who would lead them in a successful rebellion against the occupying Romans. And then him returning the kingdom to Israel. And of course, they would move up in society right along with him. The disciples needed to understand the other part of Jesus' role as the suffering servant, a Messiah who lays down his life for humankind so that they can be reconciled with God. They needed to really listen and to understand all Jesus had to say, not just following their own agenda. And how about us? We too need to listen to God. As we are often told, God gave us two ears and one mouth, so we are to listen twice as much as we speak. In our prayer life, do we get this balance right? When, when we ask God to direct us in what he wants us to do, do we listen for the answer? Or are we asking him to confirm what we want to do? Certainly, I must confess that I have not got this right yet, but I am trying to do something about it. Apart from confirmation to Jesus that he was about to complete the tasks that Moses and Elijah had started and that God was pleased with his son, this transfiguration incident was aimed at us, Jesus' disciples, commanding us to spend more time really listening to all that God has to say to us, not just what we might want to hear. We can do this by reading our Bible more, reading Christian books. We can even listen to what our family and friends say to us. We can go out for a walk in a lonely and remote place, marvelling at the beauty of God's creation, wherever we feel close to God. Most of all, in our prayers, we need to make times of silence, waiting to hear God speaking to us, and then try to put his will into action. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor He is crowned. Minister is 
February the 11th. Please join in with the words in capitals. Father God, thank you for the beautiful world in which we live. Thank you for all that you have provided so that we can enjoy your gifts. Please help us to really see the beauty around us, to hear and to listen to the sound of the birds and the voices of your loved ones. To smell the green and growing life around us, to savour the delicious food that you have given and to feel the warmth and comfort of our homes and beds. Thank you, Father. Please help us each day to appreciate more of your abundant provision and the wonder of creation. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love that surrounds each one of us. Thank you for the loving forgiveness that you extend. Please help us to really see those around and their need for love to hear and to listen to the stories of those who need your care and healing. To understand that sometimes silence is better than words and to take time to appreciate those around us. Please give us the love and grace to forgive others and please forgive us for all our faults. Thank you, Jesus. Please help us each day to love and forgive more, to try not to judge, to act with kindness and to speak words of encouragement. Let us pause here a while to pray for those we know who are suffering in mind or body and for those who are experiencing loss. Holy Spirit, thank you for the energy and new life that you breathe into us. Thank you for the wisdom and understanding that you give. Please help us to see what you want us to learn, to hear your voice and to listen so that you can work in us. To be open to the possibility of change, to pray into the world issues that distress us and to experience your peace even when there is tumult around us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please help us each day to take time out to spend with you and to breathe in your presence. Amen. Let us say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen.
well, thanks to everyone who has taken part in our prayers and reflections today. And thank you to you for joining in with our online community. So as we head towards the beginning of Lent and Ash Wednesday this week, I hope that you will be encouraged in your faith and personal relationship with Jesus and that you will discover new and deeper things of God as you take time to listen to his voice. I would like to close our time of prayers and reflections together with a prayer from re-worship. O oh God of the still small voice, quiet our inner spirit, help us to focus upon you and you alone, to hear your voice within. There are so many other voices demanding our attention, but we cannot attend to them without you. Be still and know that I am God. You say to us, as you said to Elijah, may your voice speak through us. In weakness be our strength, in poverty be our wealth, in depression be our joy, in apathy be our love. We cannot sing love's song, O Lord, unless it be your voice singing in us. Take this heart and with this mouth, make your praise and thanksgiving a reality here and now because of and in the name of our Messiah, Jesus. Amen. So may God bless you this week and keep you and all those you love and care for. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of the Lord, the whole